civil war unfolding in this country, a new civil war. And it's a war that's unfolding about and around the politics of nature. And on one side there are people who are exploiting the earth and who are destroying the lives of animals by the billions. And they are prepared to defend their interests and their alleged rights. On the other side are people like us and our military. People who are ready to escalate the struggle to whatever extent is necessary. And when there is a war, as a war is brewing now in the politics of nature, that means the gloves are coming off. I first began my background in philosophy and uh, learning critical thinking. And as I was learning critical thinking, um, it was not very well reflected in my daily habits of life, uh, which meant that I lived the sad diet, the standard American diet. And uh, my early college career, I uh, consumed a lot of meat and dairy products, in addition to alcohol and uh, other essentials in the college diet. So uh, I had an awakening one day that uh, came out of the blue like a thunderbolt uh, as I was sitting in a, a White Castle fast food hamburger restaurant in Chicago 2.30 in the morning and I for some reason ordered a double cheeseburger and it was so over the top, it was so excessive, it was so gross and disgusting that for the first time in my life I said that this is obscene and, I, and I, a, a connection was made in my mind, I can't say I made the connection, a connection was made in my mind between that food product and a, and a living animal and I was never the same. I didn't ask for that experience, uh, but I had to deal with the consequences of it. And it came as an intuition, if you will. I read nothing, I heard nothing, I didn't meet anybody. It was just my own conscience starting to work uh, in a very uh, belated way. So um, I became a vegetarian shortly thereafter that. And I was a human rights activist. I became uh, politically involved over issues relating to South America and Central America in the early 1980s. And uh, around 1985 or so, I read Peter Singer's book, Animal Liberation, uh, and has, has happened to millions of people. That book uh, just dropped the scales from my eyes. And I realized that there was an enormous world of suffering that was closed to my eyes, uh, and that this suffering was, to me, uh, immediately of greater moral consequence than human suffering because it was greater in number, it was greater in intensity, and uh, this suffering class, the animal species, had no voice to speak for themselves. So I decided that since they suffered the most and they were the most defenseless, that I would reconceive all of my activist politics for the animals. And I started teaching animal rights issues, and I started becoming an animal rights activist. The teaching is an interesting mode of doing animal rights activism. And it is the most revolutionary thing that I do uh, as a college professor. I teach a lot of things at the university. I teach Marxism, anarchism, feminism, postmodernism, all of the radical philosophies of the day. But none of these philosophies are radical in the sense that animal rights is. You might call them extremists, the ALF and the ELF, because they're taking extreme actions to stop an extreme form of destruction of life and of the earth. But really, I think we ought to call them for what they are. They're the new form of freedom fighters, the representatives of the marvelous new militancy. Certainly the ALF and the ELF are controversial. Yes, they have their detractors, many of you may be among them. 
And that's okay, because I don't claim to have all the answers on this issue. This is a very controversial issue, the use of paralegal tactics in the movement. And so the detractors of the ALF or the ELF will say that they do more harm than good. They'll say that they, uh, uh, they impair the legitimacy of the movement. And they'll call them extremists, and they'll call them violent. And even people within the movement, of course, will say these kinds of things <coughs> as people outside the movement, too. Their defenders, however, point to their success. They point to the importance of property destruction and paralegal methods in all liberation movements. And they say that they need to be one part of the struggle that we're currently waging today. Now, if you have a problem with property destruction, folks, you have a problem with the U.S. Revolution. You have a problem with the best democratic system uh, that uh, modern uh, industrial democracies uh, have, have created. If you have a problem with property destruction, you have a problem with the Boston Tea Party. Because this system was founded on property destruction. So there is arguably an ethical purpose or defense to be given for these kinds of tactics. But you know what? It doesn't matter what I think about this. It doesn't matter what you think about this because it's going to continue. It's going to continue unfolding. And as it unfolds, the ALF and the ELF are redefining the political landscape. And like it or not, like it or not, the government has declared war on them. And now the entire movement is caught up in this struggle. The entire movement is now in the spotlight of the state. Of rainforest destruction. We live in a world of overpopulation. We live in a world of species extinction. We live in a world that is dying system by system. Massive systemic collapse of advanced life forms and complex ecosystems on this planet. And there are reasons for this. This is not a natural made crisis, but a human made crisis. That if we can get to the roots of this crisis, we can understand what is happening. And we have to understand it before we can change it. And when we begin to understand it, we see that it relates to our worldviews, to our values, to our technologies, to our sciences, and to our economic system. And our fundamental challenge is not to go backwards to a point in history before a pre-industrial stage when there was no complex science or technology, but to continue to build the complexity of science and technology as we learn how to harmonize our advanced civilization with the biotic communities around us. And to realize that the true community that we live in is not one state, is not one's country, is not the planet Earth or the human race. I'm sick of hearing that we all belong to one race, the human race. It's so pathetically inadequate to understand our fundamental connections on this planet. We belong to one community, a community of living subjects. And in order to be a responsible and honorable member of that community, we need to harmonize our existence with that of other life forms around us. We must dismantle speciesism and anthropocentrism and patriarchy and the models of the 17th century that are behind the illicit and exploitative and misinformed uses of science, of a capitalist economy that is devouring all living things for its obsessive growth imperatives. And as we build democracy and we build awareness about ecology and animal rights, we begin to gain the power that we need to reconstruct our world. And our world will never heal we will never heal this crisis, this sickness in our soul, until we fundamentally redefine our relationships with animals.